It is the home opener of 2024. Hello, everybody. I'm Matthew Calvin, along with Billy Pistetto. Billy, it is time for softball. Man, does it feel good to be here in the spring. It's hot. It's humid. It's sunny. We had a solar eclipse yesterday. Today, we got softball. We are ready to rock and roll. This Howell team last year struggled a little bit, picked it up near the end. This year, they're off to a 2-2 two and two start at 500. But their opponent today, the Mid-South Eagles, they haven't played a game yet. How does that have an advantage for Howell today? Well, the fact that we've had some scrimmages and the girls got, got a chance to try some uh, new positions out because we have a whole different roster this year, uh, I think it has given us a little bit of an edge. Uh, and same with our pitching. Um, got a chance to see some new pitching. So that will be a big key to today's game. Now, you mentioned key to the game. The key to the game today is Madison Zito on the mound and at the plate. She's batting 538 at the plate this year. She has been off to a rocking hot start. We'll talk to Coach Coos later on today. And, you know, also, she's got a 3.77 ERA, but that's not the only pitching. They got Nicolette out there. Payne's come on for a couple of innings. So this team is starting to develop. And as you see here, they got their captains, their seniors, their coaches over there getting ready for first pitch. When we come back here on the Howell High School YouTube channel, we'll hear from Coach Coos as I got to catch up with her before the game. And a little after that, it is time for softball. Well, here back from Howell High School, I got a chance to catch up with Coach Coos before the game. First home game of the season. How does it finally feel to be on your home field? It's awesome, and we couldn't have asked for a better, better day weather-wise. It's beautiful. We should have balls flying around. Can't wait. Now, you've had a great start to the offensive side for Madison Zito, batting over 500 right now. How much of a weapon offensively has she been, and also on the mound as well? She's been awesome. Uh, our past couple games have been on big fields, a 225-foot fence, 300-foot fence, and she's still ripping them out there. So she's been great, and then she's carried that over into her performance on the mound. She's, we've been getting outs. So couldn't have asked more for her. Well, that was Coach Coos before the game. Now we get ready for lineups and first pitch. It is coming up on the home opener of the 2024 season. We'll be right back on the Howell High School YouTube channel. Stay tuned. As we said, it is the Rebel home opener from Howell High School. Finally, they are home, Billy, and man, does it feel good to be back here on a gorgeous, gorgeous day. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Eagles. It's in center field, Ella Mullane, number 19. In right field, Brooke Lewiski, number 12. Catherine Martin at shortstop. Fran Pancone at first base. Emma Dempsey at second base. Riley Smith, the pitcher today for the Eagles. We'll get in her a little bit later on tonight. Danny Canglosi at third base, Ella Gardner in left field, Nora Sarcone at the catching position, and then Riley Canoli will be at second base as their flex player. Let's take a look now at the defense for the Rebels. At first base, Maddie Weinmiller. 
At second base, Rose Savilli. At shortstop, Emma DePepo. Third base, Francinelli, the senior. In left field, Matty Nagy. In center field, Caitlin Zito. In right field, it will be Alyssa Morales. And then Billy on the mound, as we talked about earlier. It'll be Madison Zito. 13 innings this year, 16 hits, 10 runs allowed. Two walks, five strikeouts, and that ERA at a 3.77. Billy, what is one thing that you're looking forward to here as we get ready to start the season at home and the first live broadcast of the season? So we had talked about the fact that this season's probably biggest question mark and challenge for the Rebels would be uh, their pitching. Uh, Coach Coos has done a nice job through the scrimmages to be able to come up with some pitching solutions. Um, with the loss of uh, Marcello Riello last year, who took the burden of most of the games, uh, now we have Matt Madison on the mound and a freshman named Lincolette. So um, between the combination of them two, they're two very, very different pitchers. Um, one being uh, one way, one being another, two different speeds and two different locations. So it should be interesting. Maybe we'll see both today. We are off and running. First pitch is in there for a strike. Matthew Kaufman with you along with Billy Pistetto. Billy it's time. Let's do it. First pitch was a strike. We are finally underway. Ella Mullane, the center fielder today for the Eagles in their home white uniforms. Rebels in their home whites as well. There's a ball one and one. The count. Team that won four games last year were the Eagles. Howell won nine. Trying to pick up where they left off and get better than what they were. They're two and two so far this year. Little high. Two balls and a strike. Oh, Madison Zito on the mound today, as we mentioned. She's only walked two batters so far this year. So the control has been there. The command has been there. And, you know, she's been able to – she's given up some runs and some base knocks, but, of course, could get that through today. That's on the line and caught at second base. Rose Savilli's got out number one. And a line drive to open it up. That's one of the strengths of this Rebel team is their defense. Uh and it's, it's pretty amazing. No matter where they put and move uh, different players in different positions, they, they seem to adapt well and, uh, and don't lose a beat in terms of defense. So that's definitely a strong point. Brooke Laswowski to the plate. One out here in the first. Beautiful Tuesday afternoon. Zito's first pitch is on the ground. Slow roller in front of the mound. Zito field fires over to first to Maddie Weinmiller. And there's two down here in the top of the inning. Catherine Martin comes to the plate, the shortstop for the Eagles. Another right-handed hitter for Middletown South. Again, we mentioned that they're playing their first game of the season today. So that should be interesting to see kind of what they've got going in a momentum role, you could say, almost. Dito's first pitch misses a little low in the count 1-0. Oh. And you can't ask for a better day. Then this Coach Koo said it in the opening that this is probably the best day that they've had in a long time to start this season. Well, no. That's in the area. Center field. Back goes the center field. They're not going to get it. It'll go to the wall. Zito couldn't get a hand on it. Just over her head. It'll be a two-out extra base hit for Catherine Martin. And the first base runner of the season for the Mid-South Eagles. That just looks like a pitch that kind of missed over the zone. And a good job getting a ha handle on it. That'll bring up Fran Pancone, the first baseman for the Eagles. There's a strike, 0 and 1. DePepo and Savilli not really holding Martin on at second. Pretty small gap in between. That's a looping ball. It's going to dunk into center field for a base hit. They're going to send the runner home. Here's the throw. The play at the plate is not in time. The run scores. It's an RBI single for Fran Pancone. And the first run of the day in the season for the Eagles comes on a base knock. So the Eagles off to a good start. A two-out base hit and a run and an RBI. Let bring up Emma Dempsey. He takes low, 1-0. We well, talked about Madison Zito on the mound. Doing the catching for her today is Emily Richards. 
And the 1-0 pitch from Zito. That's into the gap in left center field. It's going to go to the wall. Nagy on the bounce. Throw will go into short. It'll be a two-out double. Another extra base hit for the Eagles. And they got a two-out rally going here in the top of the first. Time call by the home plate umpire. And, Billy, it looks like she's hitting her spots, but it's just been too much of the spot to give the opportunity to these Eagle, Eagles hitters. And you can see Emily Richards going out and talking to Madison Zeta to try to calm her down a little bit. Yeah, she just has to hit her pitches and then get settled into the game. She just might have little nerves. Um, but we'll see how it goes. All she needs is that one out. So here's the starting pitcher, Riley Smith, to the plate. Two out, two on, second and third. First pitch swinging and fouls it back near the Eagle dugout. Towards that fencing. Almost went on a yellow squonk on yellow brook road. A little bit of a mouthful there. Yes, it <laughs> is. <laughs> oh, one to Riley Smith. Getting her first start of the season. That's popped up and into foul territory again. We'll do it again. It's 0-2. Well, this is the big pitch coming here for Madison Zito. Can she get that swing and a miss or... That ground out, pop out play where she can hit the spot. Oh, two, two out, two on. On the ground to third. Nice play by Francinelli. The throw to first is in time. And that will do it to end the first. A run scores on a few hits from the Eagles when we come back. It's the Rebels coming to bat for the first time at Howell High School in 2024. We're back. We get ready to go to the bottom of the first inning. Riley Smith on the mound. And let's take a look at the Rebels starting lineup. Leading off at first base, Matty Weinmiller. Matty second at left field, Matty Nagy. Batting at third, the starting pitcher, Madison Zito. Batting fourth, third baseman, the cleanup hitter, Francinelli. Batting fifth, catcher, Emily Richards. Batting sixth, the, or excuse me, seventh, will be Caitlin Zito in center field. Peyton, Peyton Knapp will be the DP. Rose Civilli will be at second base. Emma DePepo at shortstop. Batting ninth, and then batting 10th, Alyssa Morales in right field. It'll be Riley Smith on the mound, and she did not get a start yet this year, of course, as we get ready to start their first game of the regular season. And nothing better than a beautiful opening day than this. You got the convertibles with the roofs off, Jeeps with the doors off. And we almost should have brought some suntan lotion. I might have to go to the car and get some <laughs> suntan lotion. We might get some color today. Oh, absolutely. Might be looking good. So here's Maddie Weinmiller to lead off for Howell. First baseman for the Rebels. Riley Smith getting ready to deal. Finding that uh, grip of the softball. Bounces the first one, 1-0. The only thing I could say is I don't like the bugs. That's about it. Anything yeah. else, I think everything else, we're good. And the softball field behind us, I don't know, it's looking a little sketchy with the JV. Don't want to get, you know, popped yeah, the, in the back Somebody here. goes yard, we might be in <laughs> trouble. 2-0 on Matty Wan Miller. 
Uh, the best thing is, Billy, and we got to kind of see this throughout the season, and we've got a bit on the journey together now. We got the football games where we were really talking. We had the live broadcast. We had boys and girls basketball where we got to do those, the post, the pre-games for the playoffs, and then we were there to see the sectional state championship for that as well. Three and on the count on Matty Weinmiller. And now we're here for it's been a home great, opening softball. It's been a great run, I tell you. And I'm looking forward to this spring, see what we can uh, – see what our teams can do this spring. Maybe bring home a championship here. You never know. Absolutely. 3-0 the count. Swinging on 3-0. Grounds it. Backhand. Nice play. The throw to first is in time. Catherine Martin able to make the play for the first out. As we take a look at the defense for the Eagles. Kanglosi at third at shortstop. Catherine Martin, who we just saw. Second base, Emma Dempsey. At first base, Fran Pancona. The RBI single in the first inning in the top of the inning. Left field, Ella Gardner. In center field, Ella Mullane. And in right field, Brooke Lesowski. Here's Maddie Nagy, the left fielder for Howell, the junior. Swing and a miss. All in one. There's that fence move that gives us a little... Uh... Obstruction to see in the game. Lined and caught at first base by Fran Pancone. Out number two, so two quick outs. But again, Eagles had the same thing. They had two quick outs, and then they were able to get some stuff going with the bases and some base runners. That's going to bring up Madison Zito. She's been their best hitter so far this season. 538 batting average, seven hits, two doubles, two triples, a long ball, five RBIs, and a walk. She's been good not only at the plate, but on the mound as well. And, you know, when you got a player like that with that kind of star power on the mound and at the plate, man, does that help your team both sides of the ball, of course, offensively and defensively. 1-0 count to Madison Zito. There's a fly ball in the right, dunking down and a nice running catch by Brooke Lesowski to end the bottom of the first inning. one nothing Eagles after one. From Howell, we go to the second on the Howell High School YouTube channel. Danny Kanglosi will lead off the top of the second inning here for Mid-South. 1-0 Eagles to open up the home opener for the Rebels. First pitch is a strike, and it's 0-1. Let's take a look at what Madison Zito's done on the mound. Of course, she's given up those 10 runs at 3.77 ERA and 
13 innings pitch, but when she gets going, she is great on the mound. Ground ball to Francinelli, over to first to Matty Weinmiller, and two pitches and an out. You know, that might, might have been the best thing for her to, uh, to settle down in between the innings, you know, to have a seat and kind of reflect a little bit and just get herself settled. She looked she looked a little bit better on this uh, on these first few pitches, so we'll, uh, we'll see. We'll see how the inning goes. So one out, that'll bring up Ella Gardner, the left fielder for Mid-South. First pitch, fouled straight back, 0-1. Well, you know, you take a look at this Eagles team. It's the first game of the season that they've played. You're playing a Howell team who's played four games. They're 2-2, two and two, and the Eagles coming off a tough year last year, 4-15. and 15. That's going to go fouled straight back again, and that one looks like it's going to go to Yellow Squonk from Yellow Road. Squonk from Yellow Road. <laughs> Sounds like, you know, Squonkum Yellow Brook. You got Yellow Brick Road. Follow the Yellow Brick Road. <laughs> <laughs> Owl trying to find their way to a win today. Go above 500. That's strike three looking. Madison Zito right down the middle, it looked like. And Gardner down on strike. Norris Sarcone will come to the plate. I don't want to speak too soon, but. She may have settled in right there. You can tell. So here's Nora Sarcone, the catcher for the Eagles. Zito bounced it 1-0. Now, one thing I did notice, every time about before Zito's about to throw the pitch, you look at the outfielders, you look at the infielders, they are ready to pounce on the softball right away. And what I mean by that is they're ready to dig it out of the dirt, get the jump. You look at them, they are ready to go. And there's a big cut and a miss. One and one. Good pitch there again. Very good crowd for the home opener. One one from Zito. Swing and a miss. Gassed it right by her. One and two. She looks really much more comfortable than she did in the first time. One and two the count. Two down here in the top of the second inning. Now we're looking for that one, two, three inning. Get back to the bats. That's driven out to deep left field. Nagy got a good jump right there. Barely moves, and that does it for the top of the second. We go to the bottom of the second right after this. You're watching Howell Rebels Game Day Live on your favorite Howell High School YouTube channel.
We're back on a beautiful day. It's like a beach day. We got people vegging out over there to our left here. And then, of course, we got the softball field. The beautiful day, man, doesn't really get better than this. You could say it a hundred times today. It just doesn't get better than this. It'll be Francinelli to lead it off here in the bottom of the second inning. Howell went one, two, three in the first. And the senior third baseman looking to get something going. First pitch is upstairs, 1-0. Fran, one of three seniors. Grace Andrewsy, the other one, and then Caitlin Zito, who we'll see in a little bit. Two batters from now. Third batter to bat in the inning. Sinelli hits a high pop up to first base and a nice catch there by Fran Pension. And there is one away. It's like a mile high. At least there was no solar eclipse today. You wouldn't be able to stare at the softball. Yeah, you wouldn't you be able to see it. <laughs> So here's the catcher, Emily Richards. First year here at Howell, transferred last year. So her first year in the new school. One away first pitch. Swings to the first pitch, fouls it straight back. And is Squonkum almost hit the F-150 driving by. You gotta be that careful. That can't be good. <laughs> Yeah, you ever seen those videos where it's like, I guess you could say Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, whatever social media platforms that you use, and you see these players hit one out of the stadiums and minor leagues and even, you know, travel, whatever. It's time called here, but it smashes a window. I saw it in a spring training game. I don't remember. I think it was one of those. I think it was, I believe, Ellie De La Cruz, if I'm not mistaken, of the Reds, and he got his window smashed. That's a high pop-up. Another one up there. Oh. Bobbled it and dropped it. Man, that ball was up there for a long time. And Catherine Martin wasn't able to corral it. She had it in her glove. It bounced out, caught it, and then bounced out again. And then eventually hit the dirt. I don't think she could do that again if she tried. <laughs> so Emily Richards will get a pinch runner for her. Is Of course, being the catcher. We'll try to see who that is in a moment. Well, now we got Caitlin Zito, the other senior, coming to the plate. It is no easy play to make a catch on a pop-up, especially on a day like today. So here's Caitlin Zito, center fielder. There's a strike. And getting back. Kennedy Brennan pinch running. Lays out a bunt. Foul ball. Good idea there. Try to move the runner over. Good speed for Zito as well, so that's a good move. What is it, 1-1, one, one, Pat? 1-1. One, one. From Riley Smith. There's a strike. Check throw. Not going to be in time. Brennan will, will call time. Coach Kluzowitz, the first base coach. Head coach, Coach Kuzma, at third base today. Riley Smith deals. Hi, gets away and going to second base will be Kennedy Brennan. So now runner to our position with one out. Two one coming to Caitlin Zito. Inside, but a strike, two and two. So two balls, two strikes, one out, runner at second, pinch running for Emily Richards, Kennedy Brennan. Howell down one nothing. Riley Smith ready to deal. Two two. Just missed. Three and two. Smith wanted it. Didn't get the call. 
a lot more talking in softball than when you're listening to a baseball game. That's for sure. <laughs> a lot more cheering for each other, I guess you could say. Yep. Three, two, just got a piece. That was ball four, though. But she protected herself on that one. And if you can't hit it, get a piece of it, right? Stay alive. Sure. So I actually believe this is Peyton Knapp at the plate, not Caitlin Zito anymore. It looks like number six. That's going to be in there for a base hit. Brennan comes around third. She will score. We are tied 1-1. And it is Peyton Knapp to get the RBI single. So Knapp's got the RBI single. It's her first RBI of the season. It's her second hit of the season. And here is now Rose Savilli. The junior second baseman. That's foul straight back. 0-1. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that probably was not an earned run. Now I believe. From the error. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, because that was Kennedy Brennan who scored after replacing Emily Richards. That was on the drop ball by Catherine Martin. The old one. Inside one and one. You could tell Norris Arcone ready to just chuck it down there at first base. Ready to throw behind you. Pick you off. One one coming to Rosavilli. In the dirt, two and one. I got a chance to talk to Ro just before the game, and I gave her the old quote from Wee Willie Keeler. Go out there and hit him where they ain't. That was his philosophy. He was a short guy, 1892 to 1920, I guess, he played, and uh, that was his philosophy. Hit him where they ain't. Uh, that middle of the field wide open. High pop-up, and foul again. We'll do it again. I believe it's two and two the count. I might need to post somebody right on Squonkum Yellowbird just to fetch balls all, <laughs> all game. That's a good, we had a good civilian out there doing that. That's fouled back. No need to go get that one. Unless you're the catcher, of course. In Sarcone. Row battling here against Riley Smith here in the first. Two away. Two balls, two strikes, two outs in a 1-1 ball game. Smith deals. Strike three. Civilli down looking, doesn't like the call. And that'll send us to the third. We're tied at one. Going to the third. You're watching Howell Rebels Game Day Live on your favorite YouTube channel, the Howell High School YouTube channel. Third inning coming up.
Well, we're back here in the top of the third inning. And it's back to the top of the order in Emily Mullane, center fielder. Way upstairs, want to know. I didn't know any better. She just looks, she looks like Roe. Civilly. Looked like she never left the plate. The girl's about the same stature. As about, yeah. Yeah, when, when she's in her stance. <laughs> One zero to Emily Mou or Ella Mullane, excuse me. Two zero. Well, the coaching staff for Howell: head coach Caitlin Kuzma, assistant coaches Kirsten with Stanley, Caitlin D. Christina, JV coach Sandra Kluzewitz, freshman coach, and then also the first base coach, and then Alexis Post, the varsity assistant coach. That is this year's coaching staff for the Rebel softball. Two zero. That finds the zone. Two and one. You know the broadcasting staff. That's <laughs> right. We know the broadcasting staff today. And I yet to have called Pat Mark. So we're on a good start so far, I can say. <laughs> but I don't know. He is wearing a Mets hat today. So 2-1, a little high. 3-1. and one. Zito trying to battle back here against Ella Mulane. Misses ball four, so a leadoff walk. Here to start the third inning. And that'll bring up the right fielder, Brooke Lewiski. We're going to have to guard here against the bunt just in case they try to go up a run here. ACE, Francinelli in at third, and then Wine Miller in at first. There's the bunt. Foul ball. Man, it's like we know what we're talking about out here. <laughs> Beginner's luck. Yeah, right? It's like we've watched a game or two. One or two, yeah. Of course, not watching every MLB baseball game, you know. Just the ones we can. Another bunt. This one goes back to the mound. The throw to first will be in time. Moving over to second is Ella Mullane. And a sack bunt for Brooke. Catherine Martin coming to the plate. Well, Martin coming to the plate, trying to get her team on the board in the lead after making the error that allowed Howell's run to score in the bottom of the second inning. There's a strike, an off-speed pitch. You might not be able to see the spin of the softball, but I can definitely tell when it's a fastball or not. Pitch exactly from here. Yeah. High fly ball in the left, down the left field line, on the run, not going to get there. In foul territory, Alyssa Morales, just a little too far foul. You know, the one thing we didn't discuss either, too, because of this being such a nice day, this being the first game for the Eagles and stuff, it might be a fatigue factor that's going to work into today's game a little bit. Yeah, you're right. Again, first game of the year, so, you know, you don't really know. Yeah, you've played and probably been playing softball for a longer time. That one just misses one and one. But again, at the same point that you mentioned, the fatigue, you know, how long is Riley Smith going to be able to go into this ball game? How long are these position players going to be able to be out there on a hot day like today? This is high. And again, Zito trying to battle back in the count. Report. 72 degrees. No rain in the forecast. Some blue skies, clouds, but baseball, softball season perfect. Just got a piece of that one as well. Kind of reached for it for a moment. A lot to look forward to these next couple of months. Of course, graduation for the seniors, a.k.a. me. Yep. Getting ready for that. But then you got junior and senior prom. I believe junior prom coming up April 24th, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. So right around the corner. That's a ground ball. It's going to get through up the middle for a base hit. Here comes Willane around third. The throw will be cut off. It'll be an RBI single. 
for Catherine Marinette. She makes up for her error in the bottom of the second, and the Eagles take a 2-1 to -one lead. And Billy, just like you mentioned earlier, find the holes and hit them hard. That's yeah. what she did there, right up the middle. Hit them where they ain't. That'll always be. <laughs> That'll last forever, that old quote. It's lasted this long. Put that on a t-shirt, right? For sure. <laughs> Pitch outside, the throw Ooh. down, it's going to get away and go into right field. And luckily enough that Catherine Martin wasn't paying too close of attention there to see that ball go down the line. Probably she could be standing on second base. One out, right? There's a strike. But again, that's also the danger of throwing down. You got to make sure that one, you get a good throw. Two, your first baseman's going to be able to pick it. And I think Weinmiller did a great job defensively trying to pick it. It just took a weird bounce. That's smoked into right field down the line. It's going to be foul. She, the other thing, too, she threw it from her knees, I believe. I don't think she, you know, so it didn't, she didn't get a lot on it. One and two the count. Allo won nine games last year, lost ten. Pitch upstairs, two and two. Well, the wind blowing towards right field as you see the flag straight back behind home plate, that Rebel softball flag. Just got a piece off the end of the bat. And I'll tell you, as a baseball player myself, hitting one off the end of the bat, it's like the worst feeling for me because oh, yeah. I know I just missed that pitch. The other one is when it's like 40 degrees outside and you got a game and you get in on the hands, gloves or no gloves batting, that still hurts. I can tell you that. It stings, definitely, for sure. Swing and a miss, strike three. Zito with the strikeout and a big K, two away. That'll bring up Emma Dempsey. That's a ball. A little windy today. A little bit. Just missed on the outside corner. The only sport not playing right now is lacrosse, I believe. Rebels Varsity obviously here today against Mid-South for their home game, home opener. JV's got their game. And then on the baseball field, it's Owl versus Freehold Township. Little short conference there. There's a high fly ball deep right. Morales going back and makes the catch. A nice play over the shoulder to end the inning. A run does score for the Eagles. We go to the bottom of the third right after this.
We're back here to start the bottom of the third inning. And with the Peppo, the shortstop, ready to lead it off. And Tom Cole, Riley Smith taking a little while. There is no pitch clock here in softball, of course. Thankfully, yeah. And in high school. Peppo takes outside, 1-0. One out to Emma DePepo. Lays down the bun. Back to the mound. Smith fields and fires. One away. And that goes back to the top of the order with Maddie Weinmiller. Let's take a look at her stats to start the season. She's been off to a great start. Batting 312, five hits, double, a triple, and an RBI. And she has been an offensive weapon. This offense is a team batting average of 277 this year. And of course, you got Madison Zito batting 538. Now, this Howell team, they swept the Eagles last year in two games. And again, of course, we heard earlier, as we mentioned, Eagles just won four total last year. A rough year. That's down the left field line, and that'll go. On to the batting cage. One more. Right, one more. Yeah, one more. Two and one. Oh, we'll give it a couple days, uh, maybe a couple weeks, maybe, until late April, May. We got the beaming sun, very hot. Gorgeous days, though, of course. Waiting for those 90-degree days when it's just, like, beaming hot. Get the tan going. We'll definitely have to bring suntan lotion for that. Suntan lotion, sunglass, maybe even a bucket hat. I got one of those now. That'll work. On the ground, right back to the mound. Riley Smith, a nice play. And gets out number two, so two up, two down here to start the bottom of the third inning. And that'll bring up Madison Zito. Let's take a look more on Madison Zito, a homer this year. Five ribbies, a walk, but the thing that stands out the most, Billy, is the 538 batting average. And it's not like she's only had a couple at-bats. She's been in the lineup pretty much every game, and she has done her job. Talk about a coach's dream to have somebody on the mound that can that can get it done there and also at the plate. See, it's actually Maddie Nagy at the plate, Madison Zito on deck. But yeah, either way, you know, again, same thing. You're talking about the batting average and all that, and Maddie Nagy's been off to a good start. Three hits, batting 214 in the at-bats that she's had at the plate as a number two hitter. That misses low. For a ball. One and one. One and one. Good take. Two and one. Two one on Nagy. Looking for base runners to start a two out rally. And a strike. Two and two. Pitch right on the corner there. I'll tell you, I never liked those as a hitter. Hated yeah, the thing, corner strikes. The thing I used to struggle with too is just having the patience in the box to get to a count of three two, which we're almost there, hopefully. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Two to one, Eagles lead. That's fouled away again. She's making her work for this one. Good battle here. 
that's one of the other things Coach Coos talked to me about earlier is that these girls battle at the plate every at bat. It's a battle. Another 2-2 coming from Riley Smith. We're going to have a 1-2-3, bottom of the third. Swing and a miss. Drop third strike. Uh, throw to first in plenty of time. And Nagy retired. We go to the fourth. 2-1 to one Eagles on a gorgeous Tuesday afternoon. We'll be right back. Oh, here we go. We start the top of the fourth inning. It's Riley Smith leading it off. Madison Zito ready to get her fourth inning of work started. First pitch, smoke down the line foul. Well, if you didn't know, we have a little bit of history here today made as myself and Billy get to call the first ever live game coverage of Howell Rebels softball. So, Welcome to history. History is made. <laughs> girls basketball team made history. Now we're making history with the girls softball team. Oh, on the count on Riley Smith. Line drive and through for a base hit. Right back up the middle. And a leadoff single for the starter. That always helps when your pitcher helps you out in, you know, the hit and run categories. Yeah, it's not like Major League Baseball. They don't expect a whole lot from the pitcher. Unless you're Shohei Otani, of yeah, course. Exactly. <laughs> So hit, we're, we're, be able to do it all. Here we are in the same situation again to guard against that punt because they're probably looking to, to build another run. Danny Kanglosi to the plate for Mid-South. Pull the bunt back. Good take. Runner at first, nobody out. In the dirt, no show of the bunt there. 2-0. Oh. And the other thing is, Howell does have Nicolette, that it's technically you could say in the bullpen, which would be in the dugout right now. We'll wait to see if when possibly maybe she might warm up. Zeno's falling behind 3-0 and here, nobody out. And a runner already at first base in Riley Smith. Ball four, so a four-pitch walk to Danny Kanglosi, and it brings up left fielder Ella Gardner. Now, that was one of the other things that we mentioned in the walk. She's only allowed two walks so far this year, mm -hmm. so she's not walked a lot of hitters, but now you've walked a runner on here in first and second, nobody out. 
And he's got to try to find a way out of this. Ella Gardner to the plate. They show a bunt. They get it down. Fair ball. Richard's throw is in time. And a good sacrifice bunt to get the runners to second and third. So that play worked out, mm. you could say. One out, second and third. Dude, that ball just died in front of home plate. It got like that little, it looked like the divot. When you dig into yeah. the box a little bit before a game, you get ready in the batter's box, and then. Or the divot on the golf course. Yeah. One or the other. So here's Nora Sarcone. On the ground, a third. Sinelli Fields, fires, got it, throw to the plate, is in time! They turn two! Sinelli to Weinmiller, to Richards, to get out of the jam, and the Rebels don't give up a run. What a play defensively to send us to the bottom of the fourth inning. Madison Zeta to lead it off. Cleanup hitter today. Here for Howell. Rebels down 2-1. to one. Ella Gardner took a couple of steps back in left field. Knowing who's at the plate. Just a smooth swing. She's got power. She definitely has power. I think two triples or three triples. Two doubles, a home run. I'm not quite sure. Two doubles, it's two triples. A homer. Five RBIs and a walk, and then the like seven hits in total. I'm waiting for my John Sterling moment where he got that foul ball, mm -hmm. but I'm hoping to catch it instead. It'd be okay if one came out this way. My drive, That's base hit center it. field. Well, it didn't come exactly our way, but it got a hole through the middle of the field and a leadoff single, and Madison Zito stays red hot. That's going to bring up Francinelli, the senior. That's an interesting coaching decision, too, because if, even if she's struggling on the mound, you take her out of the game, you lose her, you lose her bat. So now, that's they, a tough call. you got to weigh that out, you know? I believe it's Nicolette that's going to run for Zito. Oh, is she? Yeah. Uh, kind of like they did with Emily Richards when she got on her first at bat. As Sinelli calls time. Smith taking a little longer than Fran wanted. Nobody out here in the fourth. Upstairs, ball gets away. Nicolette will go to second standing. Nicolette Coronia pinch running for Madison Zito. 
Fran with a runner at second in scoring position, trying to tie the game. Fran maybe wanted to call time again there. That one gets away again. And Nicolette will go to third, standing. So now less than 90 feet away, and an opportunity for Howard to tie the game with a sack fly or really anything that finds a hole. Two and zero from Riley Smith to the senior Francinelli. Emily Richards on deck. Goes the other way in a right center field. That's going to get down for a base hit. Runner scores. We're tied. Sinelli going for two. She'll make it with a stand up double, and the senior comes up again with a clutch RBI. We're tied two two. Francinelli drives in the tying run, and now. Emily Richards trying to drive in the go-ahead run here in the fourth. Richards calls time. The umpire is saying to her, you got to stay in the box. Riley Smith looked ready to go that time. That one bounces. Sinelli takes off. She'll go to third. That's the third wild pitch of the inning here for Riley Smith. And that is two runners now that have put on third base. As now Emily Richards with a go-ahead run in Francinelli at third. 1-0. Line drive, base at center field. Sinelli scores. Richards with the RBI single. It's 3-2 Howell on a couple of wild pitches from Riley Smith. Gets runners in scoring position. And they're able to drive in their first lead of the game. And now we got a mound visit. I was going to say that before that last hit. that I'm, I was actually shocked with the wild pitches. She hadn't gave up a couple hits. That somebody hadn't come out to the mound and try to settle her down a little bit to see what's going on. And as they do now, and we'd like to remind you that coming up Thursday, 345 will be about first pitch as the Howell Rebels varsity baseball team takes on the Middletown South Eagles in their second home game of the week. After last week's rain events, I didn't know we didn't have any games this week. Yeah, right. I felt like the field was going to be underwater. Could have yeah. almost made a lazy river out here the way it looked on Sunday morning. And I consider maybe the swim team come out here and do a little practice. Yeah, right? Get some little summer workout, <laughs> spring workouts in. <coughs> so here is Zito to the plate. Right, right first, nobody out. Riley Smith gets the sign, kicks, deals, ball one. Sir Cohen drawn Kennedy Brennan back, pinch running for the catcher, Emily Richards. Smith deals on the ground and foul ball. Under the glove of the third baseman, Canglosi. Oh, and two. Zito behind in the count, no balls, two strikes. Takes the ball there. One and two. Riley Smith trying to find her way through this bottom of the fourth inning. Still nobody out. Two runs in, in the inning. There's the ball, runner goes. Wasn't paying much attention. The throw down, not in time. So a stolen base for Kennedy Brennan. And that just caught the catcher, Sarcone, sleeping. 
good base running on her part to, to see that she wasn't coming up with that ball quick and, and then got a good jump to get to second base. You get caught napping, you get a base stolen on you. 2-2. Two, two. Blooped, caught. No play at second base for Dempsey. And now that is going to bring up Peyton Knapp. Peyton Knapp, two hits so far this season. One out, one on. Takes the ball in the dirt. A good block there by Sarcone. 1 0. Takes outside there. 2 0. Uh, I'm going to talk about Emily Richards, the junior. She moved from Rumson th this past year. She led her RFH team in all of offensive categories last season. She batted 446, 29 hits, 954 slugging. This ball gets away and going to third, Kennedy Brennan. So another wild pitch of the inning. That's four on the inning. We're going back to 38 ribbies, six doubles, nine homers. And she will be the primary catcher, says Coach Coos this year. So, man, what a weapon that Howell got from Rumson. Send nice them over, right? Thank, thank <laughs> you very much. There's a strike. Three and one. We're at third. Trying to give Howell a two-run lead here in the fourth. What kind of gutsy call would you be able to call like a squeeze play right now? You would need the guts, I'll <laughs> tell you that. I could tell you that would be that's like asking to steal home in the bottom of the ninth with two outs. That's ball four. So Nap works the walk. And now Rosavilli will come to the plate. And Nap's going to get a pinch runner. It'll be Grace Andrewsy to run, it looks like. Or possibly Haley Roditsky, number 12. We'll have to wait until she turns around. But anyway, Rosa Villa hit the plate. One out, runners on first and third. Now they go with the squeeze bunt. Play goes to first in time. And they did not see Alyssa Morales. That was number three. So Alyssa Morales, who... Remember, doesn't hit. She only plays the field. That's the thing about softball. You get one player to hit and one that flips to play defense. And it's Alyssa Morales that is pinch running for Peyton Knapp, who in the lineup is her replacement in the outfield. So squeeze play. Kind of where that's going to bloop in for a base hit. Run scores. Brennan scores. Morales coming home. Throw to the plate. Is in time. They get her on the back. And that will do it here in the fourth. Coos with the double check, but it is an out. And Emma DePepo does pick up an RBI. It's 4-2. We go to the fifth. We're almost halfway. We are halfway through and more. Back after this on your favorite YouTube channel to watch, the Howell High School YouTube channel.
A top of the order coming up for the Eagles. On the ground, back to the mound. Zito, nice play. One pitch, one out. Oh, yeah. Keeps the pitch count down. It makes the inning go quick. I thought we were going to see Nicolette coming in because she came in a pinch run. I thought maybe she'd be coming into the game at this point, but uh, Madison's still there. Again, Madison, another really good outing. She's gotten yeah. herself into trouble, but as we've talked about, Billy, that she's been able to get her way out of it, only giving up two runs today. And the defense contributed to make that happen as well. That's lined and diving or tripping. Couldn't really tell, to be honest. <laughs> As Weinmiller takes the deck and her teammates will make sure she's all right. Give her some extra time to get back to first base. Special thanks to Pat Fagan today for taking on the camera duties. On the ground, a third. Sinelli Fields fires two outs. Let me tell you, Billy, the defense has looked sharp today. Oh, yeah. yeah, coming into the season, that wasn't wasn't really a question. They're they're pretty solid and they remain solid. So, yeah, and like I said, that that just helps your uh, helps your pitching. Uh, Coach Kuz also mentioned this, and I know that Madison Zito is a ground ball pitcher, which really does help you because that forces double plays, that forces ground outs, but at the same time. You might get it left up in the zone a little bit where you get that line drive and not with the highest fences could hit one out. Catherine Martin to the plate. And a strike. Well, at the beginning of this game, you wouldn't have thought that that was the case because uh, the Eagles were, were shooting them out here in the, in the outfield. So her pitches were higher. That's maybe because she, she wasn't settled in. She might be just settling into her game right now. Off speed for strike two. It's almost like watching a Yankee game. You know, Yankees don't get rolling until like six, seven, ten. <laughs> Comeback season, right? One ball, two strikes, two outs. Top of the fifth inning. Gorgeous Tuesday afternoon. High fly ball. Of course, right on cue. He said she's a ground ball. Pitcher gets the pop up and a one, two, three inning. We go to the bottom of the fifth on the home opener. You're watching Howell High School's varsity softball team. Bottom of the fifth, coming up after this. Who's at the plate? Peppa. And with the Peppo leading it off. Or is that Maddie Wan it's Maddie Wanmiller instead? So the Peppo made the last out. So Juan Miller at the plate. 1 0. 4 2 lead, bottom of the fifth inning. Home opener. Riley Smith getting the nod for the opening day start for the Eagles. Fifth game of the year now for Howell. Line down the left field line, foul towards the tarp. It evens the count of ball and a strike. Haven't seen one on Squonky Miller with Road in a couple of innings, have we? Yeah, right? 
I think they figured it'd be better off to put the ball in play, I guess. Yeah, without a doubt. 1-1 one, one. to Matty Wine-Miller. And a strike, 1-2. and two. They had to give credit to that bottom of the fourth inning for how really making Riley Smith work, getting the pitch count up, but at the same time, base running awareness with the four wild pitches in that inning. He really, those two runs scored on those wild pitches, you could almost say. Not because of the wild pitch, but base hits after that. Forced yeah. those runners in. Those wild pitches put them in a scoring position, and then the base hits brought them home. Two balls, two strikes. The leadoff hitter, Matty Weinmiller, she calls time. Seen that a lot so far today. These Rebel hitters don't want to wait for Riley Smith to be ready. On the ground, and it's going to find the hole for a base hit. Lead off single to kickstart the fifth. So here's Matty Nagy, the junior. There's always a large gap between second and short. The girls can just focus on hitting that ball right up the middle. It'll get through every time. So here's Matty Nagy. This is the bun. Talk about Matty Weinmiller. Spent most of her time last year. JV showed a lot of promise in the preseason. And Coach Koo said that she will be the starting first baseman. Which, of course, we've seen here today. It's always great when you hear your head coach say that you've shown a lot of promise in the preseason. You played JV last year. You get the opportunity here this year as Nagy takes a strike at the top of the zone. I don't think you I, saw the jaw drop there on the call. I don't think I know anybody. I don't know anybody that would doesn't like a vote of confidence from their coach. It just um, makes you feel good, right? Absolutely, it's like a tap on the back without being tapped on the back. <laughs> oh, two to Nagy on the ground, back to the mound. The throw to second, not in time, and they won't ever play it first either. So an infield hit, it'll be a fielder's choice, and there's nobody out for Madison Zito. And here comes the power opportunity with runners on, and nobody out. Leading by two, this is time for some insurance, and I'm not talking about Geico. <laughs> Allie Smith gets ready to deal. Zito with the bat, rested on the shoulder. There we go. On the ground, foul, headed to the Rebel dugout. That one catch you off guard there? <laughs> yeah, a little bit, yeah. I'll keep that one in my back pocket. Yeah, I like that one, though. Madison Zito's been great with runners on, end in scoring position so far this season. Yo, one. Smith rocks and deals. Takes low one and one. Yeah, for the next game, we'll get like the caveman outfit where it's easy it's easier <laughs> that caveman can do it. <laughs> Gotta love those the Geico commercials. You know, I was gonna be the gecko from Geico for Halloween one year, and I think I just I don't know, I think I went with Jake from State Farm instead. Which also was a very good costume. It's a choice. slow roller no to short. Third. Martin goes to third, a nice idea there. Catherine Martin able to get the out and the lead runner. And took the base with her too. Juan Miller will be out at third. Francinelli will come to the plate with one out. Meaning the grounds crew to come in to fix the base. And Nicolette getting ready to run for Madison Zito. So again, another soft contact ball gets runners at first and second. Now one out. Francinelli trying to drive in. At least one run. She's got an opportunity at two. Owl trying to add to the lead. Riley Smith waiting for the sign. Rocks, kicks, deals. Ball one. Very patient have these Rebel hitters been tonight. 
You know, and this the last thing in this same position, uh, we saw four wild pitches. We haven't seen one yet, but there's still time. One out, one and oh. Sinelli swings and it's a pop up. That's shallow. Catch is made. A nice jump on it. Let's whiskey and right. Now there's two of only Richards trying to cash in. I cannot believe looking at the numbers. 38 RBIs last year. Batted 446 and a 954 slugging percentage. Wow. I mean, you that's, sure that's like. Not, you're not Aaron Judge's numbers or uh, what? I don't know. I, that's what I have here. It says Junior Emily Richards, but. Wow. I mean, those are great numbers as a sophomore yeah. as well. Got an opportunity to drive in at least one here. First and second. Fouled straight back. Sound like you got the end of the bat. Caitlin Zito on deck. If Richards could get on or get a runner in. Just what, nine home runs last year Wow. for Rumson. Wouldn't it be nice to have her hit one out here? Uh, that would be great. Popped up. Smith, and they collide, and it's going to be a foul ball. What? Or are they going to say she caught it? They're going to say runner interference. So we're going to go with a runner interference. Richards will be out. And that will send us to the sixth. 4-2 after five. You're watching your favorite YouTube channel, the Howell High School YouTube channel. We'll be right back. We're back. Madison Zito back on the mound. Sixth inning of work. She's going to enter. Pansione at the plate. That's an RBI in the game. One of the two runs for the Eagles. one up. 2 and up. Emma Dempsey on deck. Three and zero. Wonder what it would take. For well, I think he called that a strike. He did, so it's two and one. Wonder what it would take for Cruz to, to pull her for Nicolette. I'm not sure. And they got the other pitch. They got Peyton Nam who could pitch as well. True. She's gone to some innings away. That's a ground ball, two to Peppo. Throw to first is in time. Over to Wine Miller. One and away.
You always get concerned about the being overworked too with the arm and stuff. It always amazes me how they can get that ball with that kind of speed and velocity underhand to the plate. I think it's harder than pitching regular baseball. Sometimes I can't even throw it overhand. Yeah, I <laughs> for sure. So here's Emma Dempsey, second baseman for Mid South. A little low. It does make it a lot easier when you can see the umpire say low or call it a strike. It makes it a little easier to follow here. As we're here in left field today, we do get the sun on our back, so it does feel good. That does. The one thing at a disadvantage to us is when the wind blows this way and that and the fence comes up and obstructs our view. That's true. Two and out. One out after the ground ball to Emma DePepo. On the ground, in on the hands. Francinelli throws to first. Juan Miller comes off the bag. So the throw takes Maddie Juan Miller off of first base. And that is going to be ruled an E6. At E5, excuse me. And that'll bring up the pitcher, Riley Smith. So an opportunity to get right back. In the game, down by two. Oh, yeah. Looks like they're going to get a pinch runner here from Mid-South. Looks like 21, Riley Connolly. There is Riley Smith at the plate. So starting pitcher versus starting pitcher. Here we go. The battle of the mound. On the ground, hit hard, diving, couldn't get it. Civilian, that's going to go into left, right center field. Going first to third, the throw, not in time. And the Eagles have first and third and one out. That is actually not Riley Connolly, the one running. Emily Richards went out and talked to Madison Zito. Two on, one out. Misses low, one and oh to Danny Canglosi. Well, Howells win against Frio Township in game two when they went 5 4. Zito. Went the distance. That's a ground ball to Peppo. Fields. Fires. Throws it away. One run is already in. This ball is going to go all the way to the fence. It'll be out of play. And Riley Smith will end up at third base. And Ken Glesty will go to second. So now it's one in a one-run game. And Ella Gardner coming to the plate. We were just about to say, Madison Zito went the distance, throwing a complete game, gave up two earned runs and five hits with four strikeouts in the win against Township Saturday. On the ground, slow roller, bobbled it, and nobody out. Zito tried to pick it up and throw it too quickly, couldn't field it properly, and the Eagles are the bases loaded and one out. For Noah Sarcone. So Noah Sarcone will come to the plane, and it looks like that might be it for Zito. Kuz is going to come in and talk to her as we will now get a mound visit. You got the bases loaded, one out in a one run game. Well, unfortunately, she would have been out of this inning if it wasn't for the errors. The errors would killed, would killed us in this inning. As we mentioned, Howell's played four games this year. 5-2 loss to Mid-North, who are undefeated already this season. Mid-North ranked top 20 in the state, third in the short conference. Madeline Boyce was second in the state in strikeouts last season with 309. Oh, 
So Norris Arcone coming to the plate for the Eagles. Base is juiced. One out. One run game. Top of the six. Kuz might have also been out there to discuss, like, if the, if the ball's hitting on the ground, are they going to come home and hey, get the lead runner? Or try for the double play. Try for the double play. I think they might just come home. Kate Doyle running at third base for Mid-South. And a strike. And also Gianna Pansione at second base for the Eagles. A huge opportunity for Nora Sarcone to come through. Swing and a miss. Big cut. 0-2. Trying to get out of trouble. And again, Billy, you mentioned, what's the situation here? If it's a ground ball in the infield, where do you go with it? You want to be able to get an out and try. If you definitely can get both outs, you get them. If not, do you come home? You don't Just wanna... miss 1-2. and two. You know, I know. From my vantage point, you want to you don't want to let him tie the game. So I'm coming home. So trade the out for the double play, you're saying? No, I'm, yeah, I'm coming home to at least guarantee me that shutting that down. Just in case something happens to the double play, it doesn't get turned. Swing and a miss, got her. Two away. Big strikeout for Zito. And now it's a moot point between that, right? That was huge for her. They take a little bit of a deep breath, but you still got to get so one now, out. Yeah, so now we're Ella at any Moulin. base. Now we're at any base. Get the easiest out possible. Base is still juiced. This time, two outs. One run game. Howell trying to escape trouble here in the sixth. That eagle crowd, that bench getting louder. First pitch. Just missed. 1 0. That's the other thing she's going to have to be careful of and not walk the tying run home. So she's going to have to be careful with the pitches right here. One zero in there for a strike. One one. Ella Mullane, their center fielder, trying to be the hero at least for now. One run ties it. Two runs give them the lead. One one. Two and one. It's like a hold your breath moment for Rebel fans. Time called by Mulane at the plate. Huge opportunity for both teams. 2-1. Two, 2-2. One. Two and two. Zito one pitch away from getting out of the jam. Base is loaded. 4-3 how we'll lead. 2-2. Two, two. Punched foul. Off the fencing. We'll do it again. Another 2-2. Two -two. She's going to have to reach back and get her best pitch right here. Reach deep into the arsenal for Madison Zito. Trying to get out of it again. We'll do it again. Another 2-2 two -two pitch. Just missed. 3-2. I thought she had it, Billy. It looks like you thought she had yeah, it, and I think I Zito she thought it. she had it too. I thought she got the corner, but we're a little bit far away. So here we go. Base is loaded. Full count. A walk walks in the tying run. A strikeout ends the jam. Got a swing and strike three. Biggest wow. strikeout of the game for Madison Zito. And it leaves it 4-3 to the bottom of the sixth. Clutch pitching. From the starter today. And that'll send us to the bottom of the sixth inning. Madison Zito into and out of trouble. Allowing just 
one run. We'll be right back. Here we go. We start the bottom of the sixth inning. What a job by Madison Zito to get out of the top of the sixth. It'll be Caitlin Zito to lead off. Rebel center fielder. Yeah, that was some gutsy pitching on her part to get out of that jam. Man. Two back-to-back -back, back -to -back strikeouts to get her out of that bases-loaded jam. You know, one, two... Caitlin Zito. That's blooped down the line. It is a foul ball. 0-2. Oh, now, here's a question for you. Do you bring out Zito to come pitch the seventh in a one-run game, or do you go to Nicoletta Payton to close out the game? That's a tough call. I feel like you get out of that jam, your adrenaline's going. I feel like you got to stick with Zito there. No two, a swing and a miss. I tell you what, Caitlin down on strikes. If she, One away. If she, uh, if she goes the other way and brings Nicolette in, it's a huge change. We haven't really talked about this, but a huge change of pace, pitching style in terms of speed, location. Uh, it it could really throw the the batters off balance by seeing uh, uh, Zeno the whole game and now all of a sudden have Nicolette out there. So that's uh, a the coach's decision, right? The other thing, yeah, right. That's why we're up here and yeah. they're down there exactly. doing that, but. As Peyton Knapp comes to the plate, the other thing you got to remember is: Do they go with the decision? Is she's a freshman for Nicolette? That's a ground ball, just short. Go to first in time. Yeah, Catherine Martin. And but the other thing, and part of that, and not the fact that she's a freshman, I'm talking about the part where that she's walked six batters in one game, and in a one-run game in the seventh inning. Like that, you got to make sure you get your – not even – you can't say best pitcher out there because Nicholas has pitched great mm -hmm. so far this year, but you want to be able to knock it down and lock it down as well. Here's Rose Civilli. Two quick outs here in the bottom of the sixth. Makes some stairs, 1-0. Oh. The other thing you want to be careful of too is you may not want to overstress her. You know, put her in that situation. Uh, fight or flight, you know, I don't know. It might, might it might be overwhelming, but that's what coaches are for. They know their players and uh, what's best for the team. And you can say, like, maybe do it with a bigger lead or, you know, with especially there's a swing and a miss there. Foul tip, umpire says, so one on one to count. But, again, forget the fact that she's a freshman. She hasn't pitched in these kind of situations at the high school level yet. Exactly. And it comes with experience. Maybe if we're talking about maybe a year or two from now, is she's a sophomore or junior. Maybe you do, but we'll see what happens. There's a ground ball, and it's under the glove of Catherine Martin. So a two-out hit for Rose Sevilla to keep the inning alive. And bring up Emma DePepo, her junior teammate. Emma, the left-hand hitter. So back-to-back -back lefties in the lineup from the nine spot and the one spot. And the righty Riley Smith on the mound. 4-3 game, bottom of the sixth. And a strike, 0-1. You know, a wild pitch would be good right here to get uh, Rowan to scoring position. 
with two out. As obviously the bunt option is not there. Or is it? Get it right down that line. Exactly. We're just right in front of the mound enough. Run to go. So to second high and not in time. So who needs the bunt or the wild yeah, pitch? You got a stolen base. Stolen base, yeah. Yeah, that was a big play because this way, uh, you know, something hit out here to the outfield, they go up to get that insurance run. O2. Got to want some pitch in the dirt for the chase. That's going to be blooped in the left field. It's going to dunk in there. Savilli runs into the third baseman. Coach Coos wants an interference call. Not going to get it, and it looked like Savilli was trying to round third and come home. Probably best that she didn't because... Uh, probably would have been thrown out, right? Probably would have been thrown out, yeah. Even though she's got good speed, I mean, that, that blooper just made it just on the outskirts of the outfield here, of the infield. So here is Wine Miller to the plate. 312 batting average this year. Calls time. Again, Howell trying to add on. They got second and third, two out. Looking for a two out rally here in the bottom of the six. That seems to be where all the rallies have been coming with two outs. Ball one. You know, the other option, too, do you send the runner from first and then get the get the catcher to throw out there and this way, if it's an errant throw, you, you get your third uh, row on third can maybe score? Do you take that chance? Oh, there is. Okay. My bad. It's opening day, you know. That's a ground ball to second. They will get the out and get out of trouble. We go to the seventh in a one Run. Game. We'll be right back. Right fielder broke a lead it off. It's a whiskey to the plate. Well, the answer to our question, Billy, it's Madison Zito out. At least to start the inning. Bounces the first one, 1-0. Oh. Be nice to see her get a, try to get a complete game here. Shut down and get these last three outs. And Give her a complete. It'll definitely be a confidence boost for her as well going into the season. One run lead for Howell. Trying to hold it right here and win their third game of the season. 
Oh, they're right back to the mound. One away. Here in the seventh. Howell two outs away. That'll bring up Catherine Martin. The shortstop. Well, we only have one. One away. Martin's to bat. Or Martin, excuse me. On the ground a second. Savilli. Two down. One out away. And it comes up to Fran Pension. And we apologize for any of the wrong pronunciations of first or last names. It actually is still a uh, preseason for us. First game of the year, we're calling. Home opener, here we go. There's a strike, it's 0-1. What's interesting is uh, Madison actually looks, she looks like she's getting stronger as the as the innings have gone on, you know? Besides that sixth inning, she's been out of trouble. Ground ball to first. Oh, That's going to be it. through for a base hit. Under the outstretched glove of Weinmiller and out of the outstretched diving attempt of Savilli. And the tying run at first base. And that'll bring up Emma Dempsey. I wonder if they're going to pinch run here at all because, uh, you know, they might send send her on to the second. This is the way to get her in the scoring position. They do send out a pinch run. They're trying to see the number from here. We'll try to get you that when we see it. One on, two out. She's going to have to keep her close. To Dempsey to the plate. Ball one. Now, the other thing is you got to remember, at this point of the game, as much as you want to end the game, you can't make the mistake. You have to be 100% sure if you're going to throw behind the runner at first base, if you even make that decision to do it here in the seventh. 2-0 and a little high on Dempsey. She may, be, she may be better served to try to lock down and just strike her out. and uh, Use that ground away. ball pitching ability, right? Yep. Try to... Beat it into the ground. So he's a lock in here. 2-0. There is a strike. 2-1. And, and again, at the same time, it's been really, besides that one inning, pretty good defensively. You had a really strong third baseman in Francinelli. Really good at short and second as well. That's ball three. Three and one. He had a really good first baseman over there who could stretch for it. In Weinmiller. Crunch time here in Howell. Big pitch coming. 3-1. Zito deals. Popped up. Long run, and that's your ball game. Zito catches it for Zito, and a win at the home opener officially for Howell. They are 3-2 and two to start the season. And again, we talked about it in the open. It was pitching. It was hitting. Madison Zito did the job on the mound. Clutch at-bats. Wild pitches took a part of it as well, but they were able to get the runners in from scoring position when they needed it. Gutsy performance all the way around. Now, this is a team that moves to 3-2 and two on the season. They got a road game coming up on Thursday. It should be fun to watch. Unfortunately, we will not have it for you live. but. We do have baseball coming up Thursday, 345 around the first pitch right here on your favorite YouTube channel. Stay tuned for the post-game interview for today's star player in Madison Zito.
Matthew Kaplan here with star player of the game, pitching end on the offensive side, Madison Zito. Madden, Maddie, let's go to that sixth inning. Bases loaded in a jam, but you get back-to-back -back strikeouts. What was going through your mind in that big stretch? Well, I was really just trying to get the outs. I knew that I'd keep it on the ground and not get in the air. And, you know, the two strikeouts, that was just a dream come true. You know, got all done myself, and no ball was hit, and there was no more worry. So I just got to pick my teammates up. Now, we've seen throughout the game and throughout so far the first few games, I guess you could say, of the season, it's been a very ground ball heavy from you on the mound. Is that something that you purposely incorporate, or is that just how it happens? Um, I throw a lot of balls down, so I hope to get ground balls. I don't really want the fly ball just to risk the home run, so just keep it on the ground and trust my fielders. Now, speaking of your fielders, your fielders had a great game today defensively. What does that mean to you as a pitcher, knowing that you're out on the mound doing your work, but you got them behind you helping you out? I know I can def mix up a few warm pitches. You know, I got I trust them, so I know I can try things that are new and not try all to have all the um, I guess the uh, pressure on myself. I know I can just let go and pitch, and I know my fielders are going to do their job. Maddie, congrats on the win! Thank congrats you. on the big game! We'll see you next time. Thank you. Have a good day.